Hello, my traumatized babies and mentally ill Barbies. Today, I went on a legitimate errand at Walgreens that turned into an illegitimate errand the moment I stepped into the Halloween aisle because I am not usually a big, like, I'm gonna decorate my whole place for Halloween. Like, I don't go out every year and get all the new stuff, you know, from Target and Michaels and wherever. But I happened to be in there and they had some cute stuff, so look. We have some new things in our background. We've got this little scarab beetle right here. We have, this is really cool. It's a um, an hourglass and it's got cheesy cobwebs kind of painted on the top, but I can paint over that in black. But it has these cool golden skulls with like little Cthulhu's on top of them, I think. And the sand is black. And right here is just a cute little bottle. Like, you know, those bottles that they come out with every year that's like, ooh, poison, like weird crap is in here. I got one of those and then I have to adjust this so I can take off the little try me thing um, and put an actual battery in it. But I got this little fortune. It's like a little fake book, but look. <gasps> Snazzy, I don't know if I wanna have that lit up all the time in the background. It might be a bit distracting, but I don't know. I see other readers that have like light up stuff like on their tables and I typically find it pretty pleasant to look at, but I've got to take like, this is the little, this is what's powering it right now. And there are instructions about how to take this off and what batteries we need. So once I do that, the book will also be in the background. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. It's kind of like obscuring my um, Ouija board right now. Not that we ever really, maybe we should. I don't know, we need another person for the Ouija board, I think. And also, I don't know that that's going to be super interesting viewing like even if I cut out all of the um the blank space but then like you would have to if like something happened essentially you would have to trust that I didn't do anything between the cut and the it's just not it's just not it would have to be like a live stream or something and I believe personally that that would interfere with the energy, most likely. I don't know, maybe we'll try it one day, but I've never seen anybody like have a really successful, at least Ouija scrying event. Um, probably the Estes method is better for live streaming and such. No, let's do this one first. Okay, so I don't have anything channeled. I just knew I wanted to do a read today and after getting the little, you know, accoutrement for the background, I was like, oh, we're gonna have a little mini haul as well. So I still haven't gotten my chicken and waffles chips. I have to contact them. And nothing's really coming through while I'm shuffling. But we are going to use for the general energy today, the Kipper along with the Pantha layered on top, I'm gonna use my blue working deck that you already saw. And unless it is a relationship read, we will be clarifying with that smaller deck. If it is a love read, I will switch over to the final rose tarot. All right, let's get the Pantha. Pantha has a little tiny box. A little tiny box. Interesting to see on the cut. Somebody might be giving you a fake apology. They might tell you something that's been going on in your in their life. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, I think we have some maybe a little bit sneaky energy here. I'm not sure. Let's see what actually comes out. Well, we'll see the under the deck energy as well, backing some of this up or changing the message entirely. It might be a fake friend message, a hater, a secret hater who's trying to like sneak back into your energy for some reason. I don't know. Ooh, I got a yes. Ooh, scandal. It is potentially a guy. 
a male, doesn't have to be, but it is someone who is concerned. It might be someone that you had a past relationship with, someone who used to be a central figure in your life as the main male or main person, and now they are not. We have courtship as well as poverty. I think this is either someone who is concerned about your love life and what is going on for you because you are not giving them attention anymore or this is someone who if you dealt with them in the past as a romantic partner they are like their own courtships that they went on to have outside of y'all's relationship were pretty much nothing and so now they're concerned right <laughs> they're concerned they might be coming back in with a fake apology, maybe some lies about how things are going in their life. We'll leave this main male up here. I don't know about that main male. Formerly main male, it's this, okay? That's interesting, I don't know, I think, well, that could be them lying, we'll see. Okay, yeah, something's going on for someone that they don't like, but they're like either trying, like they're, trying to like act like it's not happening they are trying to not look at it or they are trying to like they're going through like they're having some very tumultuous emotions or something going on in your life and they're either trying to ignore it or they're trying to make it so that you don't see what they're actually feeling or what they're actually going through I think that's it here so we will keep nightmare the nightmare that this main male is going through so let's get the tarot out see what's under the deck and then we will see what is actually under the board we might bust out the final rose tarot i'm hearing a yes on that but i'll wait still not sure how i feel about these panther cards they feel very different um to work with oh this finger hurts so bad because I did something to that nail that's causing it to like split in the center because um, there's a portion of it that's very weak because of um, something I did because my nails I typically never have any problems with my nails but I kind of put them through um, the ringer and so I'm giving them a bit of a break before I do anything else to them and this nail in particular like really has like I have to grow this little weak portion out there's kind of one on this hand too, but it's not as bad as what's going on on this hand. And I had a Band-Aid on it, but actually when I was shuffling, like the Band-Aid just hurt more. Mm. I think... I'm not sure because I'm really, to be honest, I'm not getting strong energy from the bottom of this deck. But what it seems like is that this person, this main male right now, might be dealing more with the Queen of Swords energy. That they're like, I don't know if ignoring is the right word because it almost feels like in one ear and out the other. It's like they are playing dead with this Queen of Swords person and they would like to be in with this Queen of Wands person, like someone else, they are currently stuck and they're trying to manifest their way, manipulate their way out of their current situation into something that I think like, this is usually like people will say, ooh, equal give and take. Don't feel like this is the case. I feel like this person like feels more subordinate to that queen of swords energy and they want to get into a situation with a person who's kind of like looking up at them as like you know oh like you're my you know savior or whatever it's something that they're like like thinking about doing as they're going through like this more upsetting relationship with this other person that they would like to put it into to come into happiness but i don't think like it's just this kind of thing like this person's actual energy keeps coming up and then the energy that they want to be in keeps coming up they want someone who like adores them 
likely for what it is that this person would try to provide or say they could provide. Because to me, if they really could provide something substantial, they wouldn't need to get into a position with someone who they feel like they're attracted to, but they would feel like was beneath them in some way. Like that's the particular energy. They want someone they're attracted to who they feel like they can get below them because I think they feel below um, whoever that queen of swords is. And like I said, there's no, seems like there's no real action being taken now. It's more just thinking for this main male who is in some sort of nightmare situation. So let's see how <laughs> what's on the board. I knew that was gonna be a lie. And here he is, our main male, our king of swords. Someone who's planning, right? This person's planning, they're strategizing. Um, they're a bit more cold hearted, I think. So they are a match with that queen of swords that we saw under the deck, even though they are currently in despair. What they might be showing or what they might try to show you is that like they're not in despair, they're super happy. They're super happy with this other person. They're super happy in their life. It is a complete lie. Okay, but this person is being very str strategic about what they tell people and about what they show people. But on the inside, it's a nightmare, as we saw. So let's see what's in this second row. I, this is kind of what this person wants. So we have family room and triumph. And what I see with that is sort of like, Family room is kind of like home life or relationship life. They want to have a success with that in the way they want it. But right now it's sort of like, it almost feels like, so we saw that what they want to be in is a situation where they're like giving to someone, right? Right now what they're doing is not giving and they are in conflict. And what I feel like is that this person is purposefully in this energy right now with that queen of swords in order to kind of get like this person isn't being direct about like this person isn't saying to this queen of swords i'm done with you and i'm going to be with like this relationship is over that's not what this person is doing this person is purposefully being stingy with their communication their money and their emotions likely their sexual energy as well, and they are purposefully creating conflict in the relationship that they are already in to have the success that they want in being that this person that they're with just leaves. That's who this King of Swords is, okay? So um, it's indirect, it's very passive aggressive. I don't like this. <laughs> don't like it, so let's see here. Okay. Okay, so we have message of concern with saving. Oh, okay. What I think this is, this message of concern, I think this is this Queen of Swords energy. Um, she's likely clocking that whatever she has built with this person, it's, it's not gonna be a thing. It's not gonna be a thing. And it's one or the other. Either she is planning to move on and she's not saying anything about it, or it's the other person doing this. Or she understands like she's, coming to grips that what this person is doing is intentional and getting the message of concern that this person is creating this stress and drama in the relationship. Or even if she doesn't understand that they're doing it intentionally, she understands that this relationship is over. And that even though her partner's not saying anything directly, they are already checked out of the relationship mentally and emotionally. So what they built is screwed. 
So I'm just gonna put all of this to the side and I guess we will begin clarifying because whenever I get stuff like this, to be honest with y'all, I'm just like, if the message is, if the, if the reason why the collective would need to know that is that this person is coming towards you, obviously why would you wanna have anything to do with this person? So if you already know who I'm talking about and you have n no intentions of ever speaking to this person again, go ahead and click off this read right now. If there's something you would like to know about the situation for closure or whatever, feel free to stick around. I am gonna clarify. But if you are attempting to manifest not this in your life, click off of this read now because listening to this, unless you need this to do some sort of energy work in yourself is manifesting. Go find some new love reads, some self love reads, something like that, okay? For the rest of you who maybe just want tea, but remember tea is manifesting. Um, we will switch over to the final rose tarot deck and see what is going on here. And for those of you who still feel like there is something for you to listen to here, we will also get you um, some advice and outcome. Oh, I'm thinking about that fake apology now. It might be a warning, you know, but they already, if y'all clicked off the read, y'all already know the apology's fake. Whatever this person's telling you is likely a lie. Ooh, I hate this person. <laughs> I hate this person. Misha. Misha. Quit being a crybaby. There's literally nothing wrong with him, y'all. Like when he's not being, like y'all see when Dasa is not being paid attention to, she just comes over here and gets like in my face. When Misha is not being paid attention to, yes, you. Yes, you. Sometimes he'll come and get in my face or in my lap, but what he tends to do is go somewhere else in the house and he starts crying like there's something wrong and he keeps doing it and keeps doing it until someone goes, well, I just ignore him now. But when he used to be able to bamboozle me, he would go into a different area of the house and cry and cry and cry and I would eventually go check on him and he'd be fine. He's just doing it to get you to come to him. And he does that, like he's super, he's super calculating himself. Like he won't be just direct like that. He'll be like, oh no, there's something wrong with me. And there's like nothing wrong with him whatsoever. I don't know, I'm not getting anything from that. Let's see here. The way this person, this King of Swords, likes to prevent, present themselves, like that indulgence, we, like this was the card that was here on top of despair. The way they like to present themselves is that they have everything under control. They are the caregiver. They are here to solve all of their problems. We have the King of Roses, also known as the executive producer. I'm the one who can get everything done. I'm the one who is organized and they present themselves in this way. It's a bit of white knight energy. If you are going through something, this person will step in like they're going to fix it or like they're going to give you stuff, um, support you through whatever you're going through. This is how they initiate relationships, first kiss. So likely this person would only be getting into relationships with people who they felt needed their help with that six of coins energy, but this is not coming from a wholesome place. This is like, this person is purposefully, even if it's unconscious, they are going after people who are vulnerable. So they can set themselves up as on top of them. But now what happens when that other partner no longer needs that? Well, then it's a problem, right? Um, we're gonna go around again on this because that's the presenting energy. The energy that this person is actually in is despair. So I'm gonna see if we can't get anything on like the actuality. And this might not be the deck for this. 
I'm getting a no. Yeah, like the moon is underneath and it's like, nope, this deck would not be clear with what we want. So we're gonna switch over to this really quick. Oh, and I just got the yes. So the caregiver, please. It's premeditated, yep. Yeah. It's premeditated. It's that. Yeah. The caregiver is clarified by the seven of coins. So likely this person, when they act on someone else, it's someone who they've known for a while. They will likely have some sort of existing relationship with the person or they've been observing them for a long time. They know this person's situation very well. And what is actually going on here? The devil. This is, in this case, what I've been describing, if you do know technical terms, is codependency. But it also seems premeditated for this person. This person is extremely manipulative. And they conceal their true nature. Serial killer vibes, pretty much. So we will move on to the executive producer. Large and in charge. Yes, large and in charge. This person presents themselves as the emperor, oh, the king of pentacles. Large and in charge. And the star, I can take care of all your problems. That's how they present. I can carry this weight for you. All right. I don't think we need anything else there. And then first kiss. This is how this person's relationships start. Okay. And one more, here it is. Yeah, this person like, ah, well, they're just, they're very arrogant, this person. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, I want one more on that. This person super, like this person is, you're never gonna get the truth out of this person, most likely, never. And there's an anger in this person, specifically towards women, this is a, like, this is, I'm not talking, this is not a mask femme energy. I'm not talking about non-binary people, whatever. I am talking about a man. Specifically, this is a man towards women. This person, at all times, with this first kiss, has a pool of options who they feel they can manipulate into the type of relationship that they are looking for. And it's something probably, because this is where I was getting that anger from, like the Knight of Swords, this isn't something romantic is what I'm saying. Like this is a game. It's just something that they enjoy doing. But that it is a manipulative game would be concealed. Like that it's a game. That it's all mental manipulation. It is all a battle of kind of wits and wills for this person. This has nothing whatsoever to do with love or intimacy, period. Not when it starts, not in the middle, and not when it ends. This is about how this, this person appears to other people and about what they can get out of whatever options that they are dealing with at the time. This person likely has a number of women who are friends, okay? And so while they are dealing with 
a partner while they're in a relationship with a person, because I'm not getting like this person jumps from person to person to person. They have a mane. And then they have the harem of back burners who are friends. And it's sort of like this person, every single time they end a relationship, they already have at least two or three options who they can kind of so this would be a person that as something is going wrong with their current relationship, and the going wrong would be this person is now sabotaging the relationship that they're in. They are, for the most part, creating the problems in their relationship. They would go to these friends for advice. And they would, oh, you know, this person that I'm dealing with, like Queen of Swords, right? She's so difficult. Oh, look what she did. Like, it's weird. <laughs> It's super weird, um, it's very performative, and it's very, depending on what spectrum of sexuality and gender you are dealing with, this would be a man in feminine energy. It's very feminine. It is not masculine. This is a man who would appeal to women because they would feel like he understands them and he does, but it is not to create intimacy. That is what people would fall for with this person. They would think that this person is able to create intimacy with them. That is not what he is doing. He is manipulating what he knows about women psychologically or a certain type of woman because it's only a certain type of woman that's gonna fall for this. Um, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on to this four of coins. So we're going to switch back to our final rows. Unless they tell me otherwise. No, not because final rose is usually for like active romances, but there are negative cards in here. So we'll see. We'll see how the message presents. And if I feel like, eh, we'll just get another deck. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is too many. But this is relevant. Yep, beautiful. So this person, again, they are gonna present themselves as the front runner. Like they're gonna solve all of your problems. Ooh. They'll use it against you later though. I fucked up. Sorry, I'm the worst. Ah, oh, like ew, ew, like this. <sighs> Sorry, I'm the worst. But that is this energy, like this person creating problems and then like, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just not even getting into it, but this four of coins. So this person, this card is called the jeweler, but it's like, look at this. We have like an engagement ring, right? But the diamond is not in the setting. This person is a future faker. They're going to dangle the commitment, maybe dangle the marriage. This is the type of person who would give you a shut the fuck up ring. To buy as much time as they can, keep it shell. They kind of want things to be as they are. Um, like they wanna get into a position with a person and then they keep things like stagnant or stable for a really long time until the other partner like maybe kind of catches on like, hey, like what the hell's going on here? And then they'll do something, right? They'll do something to maintain the illusion of being the front runner and like do this thing like where they're just like, oh, I know, like I'm, ugh, gross, ew, ew. And then, but, if you understand what I'm talking about or have dealt with this kind of person before, what you know is that everything that I've said about this person is a red flag. And it's only women who have never had experience with the type of person like this, haven't been warned about it, 
that either won't see the red flags or it's going to be the type of woman who has been groomed into situations where this is going to seem like love to her. Um, it will be something that she was conditioned to deal with in childhood. And until she goes through a therapeutic process with that or like self-examines on her own and figures it out, it is going to be extremely hard to break out of that cycle and to start seeing what she sees as normal, as what is to be expected as a red flag. All right, so we're doing the five of wands. What potentially are the conflicts this person is creating? So that four of coins is like that stagnancy that I'm talking about. Future faking, I'm telling you something, but then I'm withholding it. And if you try to challenge me on it, oh, I know, like, I'm the worst, like, I know, like, uh, they're gonna give you just enough so that it feels like you're making progress, but you're actually making no progress at all. Oof. If you are listening to this and you recognize this as someone currently in your life, you need to get out of that situation immediately. If you have a friend who is like this to other people, you need to not be friends with that person anymore. And I'm talking about anyone because there are women who have behaviors that are like this or like, let's say if this sounds like someone who a friend of yours is dealing with, I'm like, you might be able to talk to that friend. Don't deal. I'm telling you, I know this sounds super harsh. I was like, oh, we need to be in compassion for it. Do not deal with people who are dealing with people like this. They need to be in a position where they can figure their lives out. And so you might not need to remove yourself entirely, but I would say do not be close to a person like that. Extremely close. Because all you are going to do is enable that person um, most of the time unless something very, very radical occurs. It doesn't matter if they break up with the person that they're with, because that's how people will be like, oh, well, if they just break up with this person, you can get them to break up with the person, they will go find the exact same person. Different body, same energy. Changing the scenery, not the situation. That's why you must change to actually manifest because you can be in a completely new place in a completely new car in a completely different body, completely different partner, same shit. That's why when I clock it now, I just, oh, not my problem, not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm out, they need to figure it out. They can, there's plenty of content over social media about this stuff. They can go find it if they want it very easily accessible and you don't even have to pay for it. All right, <laughs> the villain. Oh, Taylor Swift. Why do I have to, I'm so irritated. I can't like jump to where I want to in the song. It's like I have to start at the beginning of the song and go all the way through. It is blank space. This man, like if you listen to blank space, this man, is that person who is singing this song. Like it's a woman talking, I'm telling you, nice to meet you, where you been? I can show you incredible things. And then it's like, Cherry, there it is. Cherry lips, crystal skies, something. Stolen kisses, pretty lies. But then there's like a part where it changes and he's like, I can make all the tables turn. That's what this is. Like rose garden filled with thorns. Keep you second guessing like, oh my God, who is she? I get drunk on jealousy, but you'll come back each time you leave. Screaming, crying, perfect storms. I can make all the tables turn. That's what this is. That's what's going on right now. That is the phase of the relationship that they're in. They're over that crystal skies and everything else. We are now at, I can make all the tables turn. Um, ugh. so like I said, 
the villain. Concealed. Cliffhanger. This person will never give anyone what they, they, they have them always, I wanna say it's like orgasm denial. It's like, I'm always gonna have you on this hook. You're never gonna fit, like you're always gonna be on the hook. Fighting. <laughs> I can make all the tables turn. So now this person is purposefully starting fights. Con everything's a problem. Everything's a problem. Nothing can go right. The producer plant, the op who is inserted into the reality show to purposefully cause drama. That is who this person is. And you can see behind them, there's a snake. The villain, the snake, rose garden filled with thorns. In the house, in the mansion. So in this person's personal space, and this was under the family room card. This is how they win. This is how they control the situation and their relationships. No matter what this person is presenting on the outside to people, this is what is going on behind closed doors in every relationship. I don't care which one it is. This person, like, I don't know how cognizant they are of all of this, but sometimes the way these people operate is like, this is very much, I always want what I can't have. So the second this person gets with one person, where is it? The second this person gets with one of their options, they'll usually be looking, they're, they're idealizing this person. Like, oh, she's the one, she's actually the one. Once they get this person into a relationship, that person is now the queen of swords, the person they have to fight, the person they have to lie to, the person they have to combat against, because now what they are doing that they have this person is they are now devaluing that person knocking them off the pedestal that they put them on, looking back at their pool of options and going, oh no, she's the one actually. She's the one actually. Now let me fuck this person up and get the one who like is really the person. And then the cycle repeats itself. And then if this person doesn't somehow make themselves totally inaccessible or get over this person, these people, go back into the pool. And so then this person, no matter who they're with, they'll be like, oh no, but like, I fucked up. Like, it was really this person over here, the person who I was with before who was my true love. And here's the thing. What's sad about that is I'm not sure how conscious this person is. Um, because people will be very, very wounded, very, very emotionally hurt, and they will actually believe these things. They actually will have, even though it is very strategic and manipulative, it will not feel like that to the person who's doing it what it will feel like is that they have to protect their own lives. They have to protect themselves. And um, they never, like, if you have ever dealt with a person like this and you are very hurt by what they did, very mad at them, I need you to understand that I don't care what this person looks like on the outside, unless they leave these dynamics entirely, all this person will have, person like this, will have in their lives is suffering. This person's life is an endless nightmare. There are brief moments of respite, typically when they are in the honeymoon phase of a new relationship. It lasts maybe a year, maybe. And then we're right back into it. I would not wish this existence on anyone. And I mean that because I know we like mainly are gonna have compassion for the, per the people that this person hurts. But to be real with you, it is this person who is hurt the most. It is this person who is in the most pain and you've got to be able to recognize it so you just don't get pulled into the nonsense. 
So we are clarifying the High Priestess. And there is a way, like I have, sometimes I'll get, we were getting like a while back, a lot of um, toxic women, like women specifically, not a femme, a woman. We were getting a lot of toxic woman reads because these behaviors, obviously, <laughs> Women can be highly toxic, but it tends to look a different way. So typically, you can tell these sorts of women by the type of drama that they have in their lives. Like usually they have like surrounding them always is drama. And they're like the ones that are going around going, oh my God, I can't stand drama. And like, they're the ones creating they're like the little eye of the storm, right? If they're spiritual, you can tell who they are because they're wearing the Nazar. Don't come for me, you know I'm right. Why are you booing me when you know I'm right? Y'all are the bad energy in the room, all right? I'm not going with any of that. It seems more like a repeat of how that person presents and then what they actually are. Ah, the high priestess, the secret villain. There they are on the board. Date card. And the meathead. So like I said, very full of themselves, right? Arrogant, vain. Oh, and this was under message of concern. Oh, oh, you know, the partner, this queen of swords might finally be seeing, like we said that, right? This person might, is clocking who this person actually is, the villain. They are getting the message of concern that this person is a narcissist, a covert, a covert, narcissist that is the reality so this might be this person moving it doesn't matter though because that's what this other person wants they're only going mask off when they're done with this person so let's see i'm guessing this is this other partner moving or leaving them And then I am also guessing that this person, the villain, will now be spinning the block. And perhaps, dear viewer, dear collective, if you are still watching, you know who I'm talking about. This person, if you know who they are, likely still believes that you are a viable candidate. They're coming in to tell you, I'm sorry, I know I'm the worst, but it's actually you that I love. What will you do, Collective? Will you repeat the cycle or will you break free? Will you move on into the next round of the game of life? Challenge winner. This person has won. Um, not the queen of swords, the, um, the guy, the man in question, triumph. When this person packs it up and leaves of their own accord, that is what this person wants. They've won the game. They have taken all that they've wanted. Tattletale. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Oh. The hot seat. And the single dad. So like I said, this person at the end of this will be single. This tattletale. A rat. There's a rat. Okay. I'm going to clarify 
um, with the final rose deck, as a matter of fact. But what I'm getting is that this is what I'm talking about. As this end of the relationship is going on, this person is going around to other people and talking shit. Let me tell you, and some people, the people who are actually like can clock this kind of stuff will be like, I don't want to fucking hear about your stupid little, I don't want to hear about that dude. Um, but they're going around going, oh, I can't believe what this person is. Doing. Like they're the one, they are the rat. They are the rat causing all the drama, but they're going around talking to other people. Going, oh, poor me, poor me. And you know, some people are just like, okay, dude. This is what they do when they're getting ready to enter into single energy. And they're saying single dad. I don't know that this person, I don't think, like we're going to clarify. Actually, let me see. Does this person have children with the person who they are driving? Oh, ooh, I heard her. We'll see. We'll see. Hold on. Hold on. Do they have children with this person? Because this person would also use their children as props and tools of manipulation. Like, oh, and she just leaves me with the kid. Um, not likely, but it is likely that, like, that, like, this might have been a marriage or something. I don't think it's possible that some of them might have children. I don't know. Um, probably it'll be for some of you, yes. For some of you, no. Um, but they would use whatever is, like, as the kid, whatever has been going on in the relationship, they are going to paint themselves as the victim and their partner as the villain. It's the exact opposite. So let's go ahead and clarify again. And the thing is, it is like, like, this person would be doing this as the relationship is ending, but not before they've made a clean break. That is not something this person would do. Yeah, they are doing this to their candidates. Final two. So whoever they believe is a candidate, that's who they are doing their little like broken shoulder to cry on. I am extremely psychic. Everything I say on this channel is the truth. So the hot seat. So yeah, they boo-hoo to other people and that is the bait. Women who respond to the bait are options. So if you are a woman who has found herself in situations like these over and over and over again, learn to recognize bait. Also, if a man is giving you a sob story, like, just don't. I don't care what it's about, either. If someone is, like, shoulder to crying, like, if you're, don't, just don't be that. Don't be that. Like, people just need to go to therapy, okay? Uh, like, and I'm not talking about, like, supporting a friend or something like that. I'm talking about someone who, like, consistently trauma dumps and stuff like that and never, ever goes to therapy. And it's usually the people who, like, never have anything positive going on in their life. Or whenever they're talking to you about their partner, it's like they're always going to be saying something negative about their partner, even it's if it's like in like a joking, like lighthearted way. They're gonna be like, oh, oh, she's always such a mess. And you know what? Like I tell her blah, 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 but you know, she just never listens to me. And so I just let her do whatever, but it's like, blah. it's just, it's weird. All right, we got two on the hot seat, the free spirit. So yeah, this is something that this person does when they're like breaking free, right? Oh, okay, we have, interesting. Ah, oh, but yeah, so this person, like I said, when this person gives their little bait, right? We have people who are just like, what the fuck? Like, they're going to be people who self-eliminate. They are going to reveal themselves to be not options. And the people who will end up Beside this person, they have the late bloomer. It is people who are naive. It is people who have not been through these sorts of cycles when they were much younger. Um, people who are the wildflowers, people who have low self-esteem, the late bloomer, the ugly duckling. That is who falls for this. 
So if you know that's you, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that recognize it. Just recognize it. And there's a lot of people who will go through a period of their life in that energy, the single dad. Yeah, like no matter what this person is saying to anybody, they're in hog heaven right now. This is the paradise card. They're in hog heaven. Um, one more, one more. And then we are going to get final outcome advice. Oh, sent home. You know what? Sent home. I think this person is either running out of options or they have none. Like this person's social circle may have seen them go through this enough times for them to know that they're full of shit. They might not have the pool that they think they do. They're being sent home by everyone they try their little game on. And so now it's down to the wire. So let's see what the final, oh, they're saying we need the panther as well. So we will be pulling, I'll pull three of these at first. If we need any more, I'll get them. And we're going to be layering the panther on top of these cards, interesting. I might do another reading today, I don't know. Maybe later on in the day. this person is likely going to try to come in as a viable option. They're seeing you as the beauty, like you are the idealized, like they're back in the idealization phase for whoever y'all are, right? I am the bachelor. That is my beauty queen. Let's go out, like let's rekindle this. Let's go out on a first date. This time I will actually open up to you. I've learned my lesson. You and me, baby, we are destiny. And it is also likely with this, well, what this person ultimately wants to do um, with this possession card and in your head, they only, is this a, there it goes. Possession and in your head, they want to be your obsession. Um, like that is this like, like there's competition here. Like they want to be the thing that is occupying your mind. And also what is likely is that this person, whoever they feel like is in their pool of options or people who they have had relationships with before that have been in their social circle and perhaps still are, they are going to consider all of those people theirs. Um, again, like I said, it's very serial killer. Very serial killer. It's like every woman that this man has had before is a trophy. It is a head on their wall. And I do not know that this person believes that these women have any agency. Like I said, this person has an extremely poor opinion about women. They likely believe that they are extremely stupid. Every last one. And that they are smarter than them all and that they can control them all. And so it would be very triggering for this person to feel like they are losing all their options. Okay. Strategy, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? It's not something that they're saying out loud, but it is something they're doing. Working their little magic here. They're, they're negotiating their options right now. And they're finding that a lot of people are mad at them or just not having it anymore. Like no matter what this person, like yeah, like no matter what this person does, they are stuck right now. They are stuck. Um, 
and I don't know that they thought that this time would ever come. But it's almost like um, most people, well, I should say most people, the older that you get, the less people are gonna be willing to tolerate from you, no matter who you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter how hot you are, for the most part, unless it's a very shallow person. Um, people are not going to put up with it, especially if these are people who have seen you in operation before. Okay, so this person, I knew it. Like when I saw this and heard it, I was like, they're in the Delulu, okay? We have influencer and imagination. So this person is just Delulu about their situation. They probably still think they're like, I don't know, hot shit or something. Like maybe when this was, person was younger, it was like a lot easier. Yeah. This person, obviously a person, like, so that's how they are thinking. The reason why they are thinking that way is because they are insecure. Insecure and they steal things from people. You know, it's like a time waster or whatever. They have to like sneak around and do all of this stuff because this aggrandizing thought process and behavior is to conceal and protect themselves from the reality of, you know, their own insecurity wounds, blah, 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 blah. The edit. We have the edit with schedule. I don't know, this person might be trying to flip the script. Well, like I said, like this person with schedules, they're trying to catch time and I said they were a time waster. Um, I'm gonna get a little more on this edit card. Like I'm not really understanding, but it's like they're trying to change something maybe, cutting one thing off and maybe starting another. I haven't seen anything, like any sort of direct advice for the viewer other than i don't know this person eventually might come to you and if that's the case just don't talk to them delete the number delete them off social media if you still have them there like cut all ties if there are people around you that are still connected to this person cut those people out too Those are flying monkeys. And they are also reporters of information to people like this. This person, if people around them haven't caught on to them, they'll keep taps on like people like, oh, well, you know, like people who they've been in relationships before, how's such and such doing? You know, I know she was having such a rough time after the blah, 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 whatever issue that they caused. I know she was having such a rough time after the blah, blah, blah. How's she doing? Is she seeing anybody? How's her family? Is she okay? And for however long that those people were like, oh, yeah, she's fine. Like, I don't know that she's really seeing anybody. Like, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. In their minds, it's just like, okay, that's still, that's still, that is still mine. I am still in control there. The second you cut ties in such a way that they cannot keep tabs, that they don't know what's going on, that is when they freak out. One of my little people is getting me. I've got to come in and say, hey, can't we just be, like, can't we just be like mature adults about this? I just really think that we could be friends. I mean, that stuff was just so long ago. And then if you were still like, fuck you, um, they would be like, you know, I really thought you were more mature than that. I really thought we could be adults about this for once. But no, I must be the adult. You're still a child. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it, collective. Yeah, it seems like this person 
is coming back into the game. The reassuring rose, the bachelor, and the contestant. I'm back in it. I'm back in it to win it. I wanna reassure you that this time, it will be different. It's not, okay? So just, is there anything else to pull? I'm getting a yes, yes, okay. God, this is a long one. God, I to cut this down some. Oh well, whatever needs to come out, needs to come out. So this is just a repeat message. I'm gonna tell you it's a repeat message. If it's actual advice, then. Um, what, what is this? Oh yeah, okay, so we have over there, I didn't see it, the apology. Can't we just be friends? Can't we just like, however this person is presenting to you, I don't care. I don't care. They haven't changed. They're gonna say they like, oh, I know it was like this before, but I've changed. It hasn't changed. Move on. 